The gang alliances are a very unusual picture in the Chicago area. They are not basically racial. It is not a black versus Hispanic versus white situation, for example. And really what divides them is the six-point star of the folks and the five-point star of the people. The one folding their right arm over their left, the other the other way around, one tilting their hat to the right, the other to the left, and it's really over something that simple. The Folk Nation, a prominent alliance in gang history, has a rich and complex narrative that traces its roots back to the late 1970s within the confines of the prison system. It began as a unified response to injustices faced by inmates, spearheaded by influential figures who sought to transcend traditional gang rivalries for a common cause. This movement not only reshaped the dynamics within the prison walls, but also had far-reaching effects on the streets, altering the landscape of gang affiliations and rivalries. The formation of the Folk Nation and its counterpart, the People Nation, marked a pivotal moment in gang history, setting the stage for the evolution of gang culture and alliances. Are we right with the gangsters? The Cobras, with the wild Cobras, and the Spanish Cobras. And the opposition? Uh, kings, vice lords, counts, bishops, anything that, be, anything that has to do with people. In April 1978, Larry Hoover, who was a big leader in the Gangster Disciple Gang, made a big move in prison. He noticed that the prisoners were getting really bad food and weren't being treated right. So, he got everyone together, even the gangs that didn't get along with his, and they all decided to stop working to show they were upset. Larry used this moment to get all the different gangs to work together. He created the Folk Nation, which included his friends. In response, People's Nation was created, which included the gangs that usually didn't agree with him. For a short time, all these gangs worked together as one during the protest. After the protest, they went back to not getting along a bunch of different groups decided to join the Folk Nation. These groups included the Gangster Disciples, Black Disciples, Simon City Royals, Insane Popes, Spanish Cobras, Maniac Latin Disciples, Imperial Gangsters, Latin Eagles, Satan Disciples, Ambrose 26, and Ashland Vikings. In 1980, two leaders from different gangs, Ronnie Med Doc Carasquillo from the Imperial Gangsters, and Victor King Vic Gomez from the Maniac Latin Disciples came up with some rules in prison. These rules were for the Hispanic gangs that were part of the Folk Alliance, and they called these rules the Spanish Gangster Disciple Concepts. Larry Hoover, who was a big leader, said these rules were okay, and this made even more groups join the Folk Nation. Some of the new groups that became part of Folk Alliance in prison were the Harrison Gents, Milwaukee Kings, Latin Lovers, Latin Stylers, Orquestra Albany, and Tutu Boys. In 1981, the Folk and People Alliances groups decided to let more gangs join them. This really kicked off when two leaders, Michael Mickey Bull Johnson from the Black Disciples and Richard Cold Black Doherty's from the Gangster Disciples, got out of prison. They both talked a lot about the differences between their two gangs and ended up splitting up the neighborhoods where they controlled territory. They also spread a lot of information about the Folk Nation to everyone on the streets. Now, all the gangs that joined folks, no matter if they were Hispanic, white, or black, knew that they were part of the Folks Alliance. In 1983, the Folk and People Alliances made their rules official and even decided on certain symbols and ways to dress to show who was who. These nations got really strong in the middle of the 1980s, but by the late 1980s, they were hard to keep in order. From 1988 to 1992, it became even harder to follow their rules on the streets because there was so much drug selling happening. These nations are still around, but they can't always keep things peaceful anymore. In the late 1980s, there was a lot of fighting between the folk gangs. For example, the Tutu Boys and Ambrose both fought against 2-6. Also, the Satan Disciples fought with Ambrose, and there was a big fight between 2-6 and Satan Disciples too. In the early 1990s, things got even worse between the folk gangs. The most surprising fight was between the Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples. By the mid to late 1990s, the fights got even worse, especially between gangs on the north side, like the big fights between the Insanes and the Maniacs. These are the gangs that are a part of the Folk Nation Alliance. All Port Lovers, Ambrose Nation, Brazers Nation, Harrison Gents, Imperial Gangsters, Crazy Get Down Boys, 
Latin Eagles, Simon City Royals, Black Disciples, Gangster Disciples, Black King Cobras, Boss Pimps, Party People, Gangster 26, Hoodlums, Ashland Vikings, Campbell Boys, C Notes, Colored and Deuces, Insane Deuces, Insane Dragons, City Knights, Satan Disciples, Guest Boys, Latin Jivers, Insane Orchestra Albany, Insane Popes, Brazilian Boys, Spanish Cobras, Loreza, Tutu Boys, Latin Dragons, Latin Souls, Latin Stylers, Lynchmen Sir Khan Gangsters, Latin Disciples, Milwaukee Kings, Morgan Boys, Sin City Boys, Spanish Gangster Disciples, Unknown Assassins, Universal Latin Lovers, Young Latino Organization Cobras, Young Latino Organization Disciples, the journey of the folk nation from its inception within the prison system to its impact on urban streets encapsulates a period of significant transformation within gang culture, despite initial intentions of unity and collective resistance. The alliance eventually grappled with internal conflicts and the challenges posed by the drug trade, leading to a fragmentation of unity. The history of the folk nation serves as a testament to the complexities of gang alliances and the volatile nature of such affiliations. It reflects a narrative of unity conflict, and the relentless quest for identity and dominance in the ever-evolving tapestry of gang culture.